Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am here with the first episode of Sampler Quilt Sunday. I'm very excited about this new series. Yes, I have lost some sleep over it. I was like, what did I get myself into? But I am still very excited about it. I think I just picked the hardest possible theme for the first one. First, I've never made a sampler quilt at all. Second, the first one, since I had pieces from previous projects that had little, you know, tiny looking pieces, I thought I'll make all of this um, blocks that are tiny or at least small. I'm, I'm upgrading from tiny. <laughs> Small looking pieces. Either I start out with small scraps and put blocks together or I start out bigger and then make it look like I started out small or I'm also using fabric that has small prints as fillers because there's no way I can do all this tiny piecing. It would take me forever. Look at these little um, half square triangles I made. I think I started with a one inch square line on the diagonal, sewing on each side of the line, but not a quarter of an inch because there'd be nothing left. Just very close to the line. And that is what we have <laughs> for a half square triangle. I would never be able to sew four of these together or whatever because it would end up being just all seam allowance. So it, I do have two. Let me show them to you. They're awfully cute though, aren't they? I'm hoping I can put these in the quilt somewhere. They could even be the center of a like crazy quilt block. I will have videos down below for like whatever videos or projects I talk about that I have a video for. So always go look down below at the videos. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you the previous pieces that I had that I'm going to use in this quilt. I showed them to you in the announcement video, but I have them laid out on a table now. And then what pieces I've made since. And then today we're going to work on making these crazy quilt blocks that look alike. What I did is I started with a center. Now the center was a strip set. Um, you know, probably all these pieces here. So two of these four blocks have, just, just because of the way I cut, the centers look, you know, more alike. And then these two look more alike but they were from the same strip set. And I started with that as a center, and then I just went around and around, a la Crazy Quilt style, uh, with the same fabrics, in the same order. So how do I show this to you? Like that. So I have four pieces that look very similar. And I thought, I'm going to leave them a weird shape like this, and then I'm just going to square them by using background fabric. And I don't know, in my head I feel like I might just make like a column of these in different directions, and that would be my quilt block. But today we're going to make these together. I do want to tell you the difference between a crazy quilt block and a crumb quilt block. This is actually both. It's made with crumbs. It's made with small pieces or made to look like the pieces are small. You know, who knows? I might have had a gigantic big piece of this and sewed that on, but then just trimmed it. But what makes it a crazy quilt block is because we start with a center and then we just keep working around and around. So you can use gigantic pieces and work around. That's a crazy quilt block. Also, crazy quilt blocks are famous for using different fabrics, mixing just 100% cotton with cotton flannel or even um, knits that have been stabilized and so they don't stretch or velvet or satin. You can use anything you want. That's the, the beauty of Crazy Quilt Blocks. And uh, I did make a whole bunch of those in a series, didn't I? Yes, I did. Block Party or something like that. I'll link to that down below. I did want to explain that this series isn't really a tutorial, especially this particular one that I'm doing these all these crummy things. I won't have a quilt kit for this because I won't have anything to give you because I don't know what I'm going to be using. However, I can start trying to put more penny auctions for scraps. 
And I think I will start doing that because I think I'll be using just pretty much scraps for all of these videos. I don't think that even as I move on to other types of sampler quilts, I don't know that I'll necessarily ever have quilt kits for that. But even this particular sampler quilt with all this hot mess going on might give you some ideas. I can at least try to let you know like the finished sizes of the blocks, but don't hurry up and go make blocks that size because I might cut those blocks or add to them. I just don't know. Right now I'm just making all kinds of pieces. I would like to start um, putting borders around some of them and making a completed block so I can just start laying those out. I'm just going to, you know, wing it the whole entire series for as long as I feel like doing this, which should come out every Sunday. I'll record all week during the week whenever I sew, and I'll have it out on Sundays. I might even put it up Saturday night because a lot of my viewers are from the UK, and it's even later for them, so it would be there ready for them when they get up Sunday morning, and I'd like it to be out all of Sunday, so it might be uploaded late Saturday night. Maybe down the road if I do, uh, you know, like I could do a sampler quilt that uses just half square triangles in just a certain number of colors or whatever, I could probably have quilt kits for something like that. We'll just see how it all goes. Or sometimes I might just start with some of my scrappy pre-cuts and say we can make a sampler quilt out of these 50 scrappy pre-cuts or 100 scrappy pre-cuts that I sell. So it's just going to be fun. I'm going to love it. I really think I am. I just got a little bit discouraged when I started making this shit. <laughs> I was like, this is going to take a very long time, but I really, you know, I'm just playing with things at this point. And I do have some ways to make those where you start out big and then you just cut along the diagonal. So it's not a matter of making them, but it's a matter of attaching them. I do have a few bigger ones that I attached, and even those, it's very thick in the center where all those intersections match. But again, I'm going to play with things. I will figure things out as I go. So right now, I'm going to take you over to the table and show you, uh, you know, the older pieces that you saw in the announcement video, and then what I've made so far, and then we're going to sit at the machine, and we're going to start making these guys. All right, let's go. Yes, my mother's TV is very loud. Here is what we have going on, and I will explain all these different sections. Let's start here. Those are the strips that you saw. I actually have a video of me making those strips, and then uh, strip sets, and you saw them in the announcement video. And then these are the pieces that I made. I'll link down below to that too, where it's like little tiny, almost like half inch pieces. I don't even really remember how I made those. I don't. This tray is a tray that I worked out of for previous videos. You know, there's just all kinds of stuff going on in there. Some are already pieced. Uh, so I pulled that out. This is all a pile of new scraps that I just cut uh, recently because I've been cutting a lot of fabric for my exclusive sales. Fabric Frenzy 20 coming up November 8, 2019 for that entire weekend. And then you might recognize these from my um, Fat Quarter Quilt that I recorded just a little bit before I'm recording this one. And there was one part where we had to cut like an inch off the stack of Fat Quarters. And they all work together nicely, so I have that. This is my backing. I'm not happy with it at all. I'll talk about that in a minute. Here are a couple of strip sets that I just put together with my new scraps. And on this guy, I started cutting some triangles. I had an idea of kind of making like, um, like turning, let's see, how can I explain this? Something like this and having um, triangles in between from another strip set. But I don't know, and I was like, it's not really looking tiny, but, but no, I've upgraded from tiny. I'm going with small, I'm good with that. But then I thought, how cool that would be for a flower, huh? And then I could um, maybe cut some triangles out of this one and alternate, or I could try to make them all this color and then add a center. So see how much fun I'm going to have with this. This again is something that I think you saw. 
And then these are just little pieces that I had started to put together. Sometimes I just sew and start connecting. And I'm going to be keeping all this in a different tray. I actually have a couple trays. I use these trays that my mother gets these sweets in. So that's how I store everything. I just put, like, I'll probably put pieces that are already pieced in one tray and then, you know, smaller scraps in another. And then I have this tray box for, um, I think that will be good to hold like all the strips so I can just get to them easily. I just like to put stuff in trays because when I'm done for the day or whatever, I just move the trays and uh, all is good with the world. Here is a little square that I made that's not trimmed up yet out of um, half square triangles that I believe were probably about this size. Those were a better size, but still, it's a lot of work to put that together. But I do like them still, and I may come up with a way to use more of those. That's just a leftover. There's my two little tiny ones. And these are the blocks that I made that I was really quite happy with. I just like that, and I think I might do something fun with that, and that's what we're going to work on today. Now, let's get back to my background. You'll notice that all of these fabrics, hardly any white, a little bit of white in uh, a couple places on those strips. These, there's a lot of white. Now, I'm not thrilled with white background. I really would have liked something different. I don't know about the lighting here. These definitely go good with the white background. These, you know, I don't know. I just would have liked not pure white. So I'm very torn about this. I don't know if I'm going to go try to find something else, like even like a pale yellow. I couldn't get pale gray. I couldn't get like a very light tan. I couldn't really get anything. I ended up going with the white and I'm just, I, I don't know. It just seems so white to me, but maybe I can do something about that. Um, I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'm going to try to force myself to use it because I bought a whole bunch of it. So this is what I'm working with, and this is what I've got done so far. And now let's go make, where are they? Oh, I just moved them. Let's go make a set of those guys. I might make just two. One thing I thought of with using the white background, if I have a lot of white showing, I could always just do some decorative stitching or just stitching, you know, around the blocks with a different color Thread just to break it up. That could be really cool. So I don't know if I will do that, but I'm letting you know you could do stuff like that. And maybe I'll do it in a different sampler quilt. And I think if I spread out the pieces, I mean, obviously I'm not going to put like all of these all in the same spot. They might not even be this shape. I might be cutting those. So I'm going to try to force myself to go with the white because I always want to use white and then I never do. So maybe we just need to do that. All right, I'm going to start, and I'm going to make two. Now, normally with a crazy quilt block, you can start with a five-sided, but since I'm starting small, four-sided is good. And I'm just going to cut something wonky out of this. So here's my center for this one. And then let's do uh, a four-sided center for the other one. We're going to make just two. That's a little crooked there, but just so you know, I don't have to worry about that. I can lay my strip down so that uh, it'll be straight. So we're just going to start going around in circles. I kind of liked how this one, though, had, you know, really tiny stuff starting in the middle. I actually made a strip set, I'm not kidding, with pieces probably three quarters of an inch wide. And with the quarter inch seam allowance, well, I actually tried to do it a little smaller. I would open that up. I mean, it's like all seam allowances on the back, but it was just, I don't know, it was just fun to do. Even this one, like, look at this block. Look at this strip here between my fingernails. That's its own strip, as is this guy, which is quite narrow. I just, I love the tininess, but it's impossible for me to just do only that because again, it would take me forever. So let's have our centers. I'm gonna just work with my new strips that I have. 
I love strips like this because it looks like this was pieced. I like stripes. And I'm going to just um, put any edge on here and I'm going to sew. And then I'm going to do the same with the other center now. So now I'm just going to finger press these and then I'm going to cut in the direction where it's already going. Uh, I'm just going to follow the direction of the brown block. So I'm going to cut that way. Like that. And then this edge is just straight, so I'm going to do that. And then I could leave this big like that, but I want it wonky, so let's go and just trim it like this. I just want wonky. That's the other thing about crazy quilt blocks as opposed to just like patchwork blocks. Crazy quilt blocks are wonky. So I'm just going to follow my lines and again I'm going to just wonkify that one. Well, it's not too wonky, but wonky enough. Now I'm going to go in the next direction. So I added a piece here, now I'm going to add a piece here. And Finger press. And then I'm going to trim and trim. Ooh, this one's got a nice angle happening. And let's see, I'll just make an angle like that. And then this guy will make an angle like that. And we're ready for the next round. Keeping them wonky. Now we have this happening. And if I wanted, I could like do a round all around with my background fabric and then start back up with the colors. So it would look like a little block inside a bigger block inside a bigger block. But I'm just going to continue with this for right now. And let's use something darker. Do we have something darker? Let's throw a pop of red in there. interrupted by the phone and uh, I think what I'll do is I'm just going to keep going around and around and now I'm going to you know take that off I really should be saving some of these scraps I really should let me just continue to go around a few more times and then I'll show you what I ended up with I have my two blocks for some reason, they're not going in the same direction. I don't know. I must have turned at some point. You can see I have the, the golden stripes at the top, but one has the brown to the left, one has the brown to the right. It's just, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I did the same on the others, but again, I don't care. These are just going to go somewhere. I have no clue. I'm stopping at this size because I don't know if I want to make them bigger, if I want to do something else. I always can. I just, uh, you know, this whole series is going to be me just sitting down and trying to figure things out as I go. So I'm going to stop for right now, but I'll jump back in probably tomorrow. And I'm um, hoping that I can do something with the background the next time you see me. It's a couple of days later, and this video is not going to end the way I expected it to. That's going to happen when I have a, a series going on where I record different times during the week. Things can change by the time the video is done. So here's the deal. I was so not happy with the white background. I just I just can't bring myself to like it. With that said, I also needed the white for the um, gingham quilt that I made. Go watch that video. And for that quilt, I was using, uh, you know, shades of brown. And, you know, the white is very white. But for gingham, I really wanted it white because to me, gingham, the light color, just needs to be white. I think it might have been okay with a very pale tan. It would have. It would have been okay. But I wanted white. And since I was getting white, I was like insisting I was going to use that as my background for the sampler quilt. But I just have too many blocks that I think would look better not against white. So I went to Martin's and I picked up two fabrics that I think I really like. 
this. I didn't see this last time. This is actually muslin, which I'm very happy with. Uh, it looks yellowish here because of the lighting. Let me see if I can move that. And it might look white, but look, this is white. This is not white. This is kind of what I was going for. However, I also liked this mottled kind of color like this. I wish I could have gotten this in a, you know, a lighter shade. This is it against the muslin. And then let's put the white up there too. All right. Now that I have this, and I was very anxious to get started with it, but I was in the process of doing the um, gingham. I don't know why I can't think of the word gingham today. The gingham quilt. So I had to finish that, and I was finishing it yesterday. I kind of went later in the day than I expected, and then I thought on uh, Saturday, I'm spending all of Saturday to actually make some blocks using a variety of my backgrounds. I might incorporate all of them. I just don't know yet, but I'm even thinking that maybe around some blocks I can have a little bit of this and then some white or I just want to break it up. And um, that was my plan. I was so excited. And then last night, my iron died. <laughs> can't keep it on. I can turn it on. Something's rattling on the inside and I, I just can't use it. I cannot use it. I did everything in my power to make it work and it didn't. So I have no iron. It's coming on Monday. I've already ordered a new one, but today is Saturday at the time that I'm recording this and I have no iron. There's no way I want to try to make blocks and have, you know, borders around each block without an iron. I need an iron for this next step. So that means I have to end the video now, but I wanted to at least show you my backgrounds. Backgrounds, plural. I don't know too many people who have to have three different colors for one background, but this girl does, apparently. All I'm going to do now while waiting for my iron is uh, not only take care of everything else that I do, but I'm going to just put some more pieces together and I'm going to work on, you know, a flower and different things. So I'm very excited. I think it's going to be a very fun series. I hope you guys like it. I'm going to try not to make them so long. I really am. I promise. Because I know a lot of you don't like how I go on and on and on and on like I'm doing right now. Um, and, uh, you know, I will try. I will get better at this. I've been saying I will try to have shorter videos since day one. And that's never happened. So, I don't know. It might not ever happen. I don't think. <laughs> Do subscribe so you don't miss any more of these episodes, and I will be back uh, with this series on Sunday, a week from now. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!